Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and today I will show you guys 10 things that I believe every iPhone user should do. Whether you get a new iPhone, you switch to another phone or you have another iPhone but haven't checked out and done these things on your iPhone, I believe every user should make sure that they do these 10 things on their iPhone to make sure the iPhone will perform better, have better battery life. Of course, it will be more secure and of course your data will be more secure as well. So let's get started with the first one. One of the first things that I believe every user should do on their iPhone is to check out which apps have permission to use the cellular data. So once you go to your settings and you go under the cellular, you will see here cellular data, this section right here, which shows you all the apps and how much data they have used. So right here, we will have the complete list. You can see we have the uninstalled apps right here and we also have system services. So these are the system services that are using your cellular data. You cannot do anything about that. They will use your cellular data, but right here we'll see all the different apps that are using the cellular data on your iPhone. Now, of course, there might be like apps like games or apps that you don't really need that much and they're using data maybe to send you notifications or stuff like that. They're using data in the background and that, of course, will consume sometimes quite a lot of data so if you have a limited plan or you just don't want apps to use your cellular data of course that will take cpu power as well and battery life make sure you go ahead and check the list of all the apps that you have enabled cellular data for and of course you will have the option from here to go ahead and disable cellular data for each of the apps one of the most underrated features of the iPhone, in my opinion, is Upload Unused Apps. Now, Upload Unused Apps is an amazing feature which I use all the time. I see a lot of people complaining about low storage on their iPhone, while at the same time they have tens of apps installed, which probably they haven't even used in weeks or even maybe months. Of course, they take quite a lot of space. But if you go to your settings and go to App Store, you will find here a section that says Upload unused apps what this does is every time you don't use an app for a long time it will automatically delete the app from your device now if you have documents on that app data of that app on your device they will be saved so every time you go ahead and reinstall one of those apps you will still have the data there so the data will still be saved but only the app part will be removed from your device. Now, one great thing about iOS 14 is that if you just want to search for any of your apps, you go ahead and search them here, then you will notice that the apps that have been uploaded will be shown right here. So you can see that little arrow right there with a the cloud, that's an icon for uploaded apps. So you just go to your app library, search for any apps that you have previously installed on your device. And if you see that those apps have been removed, you just tap that little icon right there and the app will be automatically reinstalled and still have all the data there. So that's an amazing feature which every user should take advantage of. One feature that everyone has been waiting for a long time to come to iOS is dark mode. Of course, it is cool. It looks really, really cool, but it is very, very useful as well. So what I suggest you do every iPhone user should go ahead and enable dark mode on their iPhone. If you don't like to keep it on all the time, of course, you can go ahead and set it at automatic, which basically will turn it on like at nighttime, will turn it off at daytime. So you go right here, we'll have sunrise to sunset, and of course you will have a custom schedule as well. Now, the importance of dark mode is that if you have an iPhone with an OLED display, you can notice right here on the settings app, only these parts where it's text or a button or these previews right here are parts of the screen that are turned on. Everything, these like true darks right here are parts of the screen that are turned completely off. That means that those pixels are not working right now, they're turned off, that of course means it will save a ton of battery and if you use it throughout the day of course you will notice an increase in battery life on your device 
Of course, it is important that you always keep your device updated. With iOS 14, you will get some new settings. So go to general and go to software update. What you will find right here is a section that says automatic updates. When you go here, you will find download iOS updates and install iOS updates. So here you should choose how you want to install updates on your device, whether you want to download them and then install them manually, or you want everything to happen automatically. If you want that to happen, you go ahead and enable both of them. But if you're someone that doesn't really keeps their device up to date, which you should, then go ahead and disable both. But of course, every time I recommend you go ahead and update your device. So if you just go ahead and disable these, then it won't actually download the update to your device. If you leave it like this, the update will be downloaded. And if you don't install it on your device, then it will just take a lot of space on your device. So if you go ahead and keep this on the first one, download iOS update, always make sure that you go ahead and install the update because it will take quite a lot of space, of course, depending on the update size, but it will take quite a lot of space on your device. Now, of course, since iOS 14 has been released, everyone has been going crazy about the home screen widgets and all that stuff. But by far, my favorite feature of iOS 14 is the app library. What you should do right here is go ahead and enable notifications for the app library. So you can see we have all the apps in different folders here. You can see I have a notification right there for Instagram. If I didn't have this enabled, then of course I wouldn't know that there is a notification on that app. Of course, if you have removed the app completely from the home screen and just place it on the app library, then it will be very hard for you to notice that you have a notification on that app. So go to settings, go to home screen, and make sure you have here notification badges enabled for app library. You can see now if I disable that, go right here, there is no notification at all. If I just go ahead, enable this, there we go, we will have the notification badge and it's easy to see which apps have notifications. Go ahead, open the folder and you will see the app with the notification right there. If you have an iPhone that has a face ID, then what you should do is always make sure that you set up an alternate appearance. So by setting up an alternate appearance, even though you might not have one, maybe you just keep your style like your beard and everything always the same, what you should do is go ahead and set up an alternate appearance because that will speed up the unlocking of your device. Even though you might not have an alternate appearance, always make sure that you set up your face ID and set up an alternate appearance as well. Of course, you should keep always your device secure. And that of course is checking the privacy settings. Always make sure that you do a regular check on the privacy settings. So when you go to privacy, you will see of course location services. You can go ahead here and see which apps have your location. So you can see right here, ask while using the app, you can go ahead and basically choose here what you want apps to know. Like if you want precise location, ask next time or while using the app only. And of course, another thing that you should do is check out the permissions to your photos and especially to your microphone and to your camera. Of course, local network and Bluetooth as well. So if you go to camera here, you can see a list. All these apps have permission to access the camera of my iPhone and all these apps here have permission to access the microphone of my iPhone. So you should always make sure because you might accidentally give permissions to different apps, you always make sure that you go ahead and check out all the different privacy settings and make sure you only enable apps that you trust. Now, of course, a lot of settings that you need to configure under the camera settings. So of course, the first of them is by going to formats, always make sure that you choose high efficiency. This, what it does is just takes photos that won't take that much space on your device. So make sure you have that enabled. Also, if you're recording videos and you're always watching them only on your iPhone, you don't have a 4K TV or any 4K monitor where you want to watch these videos, always make sure that you go ahead and pick up HD here, 1080p, of course, 30 or 60 frames per second. Because if you're shooting at 4K, it will take very much space on your device. And if you're not watching it on a 4K screen, basically it's the same, you won't notice any difference. So always make sure you go ahead and choose 1080p. 
Another thing I want to talk about are widgets. Of course, they're cool and you get a ton of different third party apps that have widgets and we want to have them on the screen of our iPhone. But if you're just keeping a ton of different widgets on the home screen, which are always active, of course, that will have an impact on the CPU performance as well as battery life of your iPhone. So always make sure to go ahead and configure the widgets by removing the ones that you don't really need and of course just leaving the ones that you actually need so just go ahead take a look at your device don't keep widgets around that you're not using or don't even need and of course that way you will preserve a lot of battery and cpu performance as well and last but not least something really simple but i believe every iphone user should do regularly reboot your device make sure you always reboot your device every two or three days make sure you go ahead and reboot it if you have a device without a home button you tap volume up down and press the power button you just hold it and it will do a forced restart so just keep it like this until you see the apple logo and you're good to go you will have rebooted your device just like that So that is it for this video guys these are 10 things that i believe every iphone user should do on their iphone whether you're buying a new phone or you still have an old iphone you should do these things to make sure that you all your device will perform at its best thank you guys for watching don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video also don't forget for more i'll see you on the next one